In this program, I want to compare strong and weak acids and bases. Let's begin with the case of a strong acid. The acid I'm considering here is a generic acid called HA. If I start off with 100 particles of HA and place them into water, essentially almost 100% of them will break apart, forming 100 of these acid particles, the hydrogen ion, and 100 of the A minus anion. What we say is that it completely dissociates or breaks apart. As a result of this, we have a solution that has lots of ions in it, which makes it now a great conductor of electricity. We also have produced a very high concentration of hydrogen ions, which gives it a very low pH. The presence of these hydrogen ions also makes it very fast reacting. So you can see a picture of the acid down here with these substances completely broken apart, the bond broken between H and A. In a weak acid, this isn't quite the same. In my weak acid, if I start off with 100 particles of, say, HA, so we'll say we have 100 of these, I might only get one of these forming and one of these anions forming, leaving 99 of them in the original HA form. This then results in the presence of very few ions. So diagrammatically, it would perhaps look like this, with most of my HA molecules still intact, and only one that dissociated or broke apart. This leads to substances that are very poor conductors of electricity because of how few ions you have present. Because you produce a very few amount of hydrogen ions, you also happen to be, have pHs that are somewhat higher um, than the pHs of strong acids. And finally, these are very slow reacting. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna produce more. That's one of the common misconceptions is that strong acids will produce more of a product or use more to neutralize. I'm just saying they're faster reacting. Now let's look at examples of a few of these. And these you need to commit to memory. First of all, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid are all examples of acids which essentially dissociate almost 100%. Weak acids, carbonic acid, which you come across in soda pop, phosphoric acid, which is found in many household cleaners, and acetic acid or ethanoic acid that's found in vinegar. These are all examples of substances that have difficulty breaking apart or dissociating. Now we can also have strong bases as well. Strong bases also like to dissociate. So here with sodium hydroxide, I can see here that if I put in 100 of these, it'll break apart forming 100 of these and perhaps about 100 of these. Strong substances are also given a one-way arrow to indicate their favored direction. Examples include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and most hydroxides can be viewed as strong bases. Weak bases, on the other hand, don't dissociate, don't break apart. With fewer ions, they're poor conductors and also less reactive. Let's take a look at an example of one here. Um, methylamine, I've given an example here. Ammonia is also another one that behaves in the same fashion. So what happens in these situations is the hydrogen ion is given to this substance. So this acts as the base because it's accepting it. And when it accepts it, we make very, very few of these ions because this reaction essentially goes in both directions, forming the ions, but they immediately collide and turn back into the original material. So we have substances that are poor conductors. So strong and base, strong uh, bases and weak bases can also be indicated by the presence of the equilibrium arrow as with strong acids and strong bases. If we look back here, 
we can see in the case of the strong, a one-way arrow, and a two-way arrow, the equilibrium arrow, indicating the weaker situation. In our next program, we'll take a look at acid deposition. Thanks for watching.